So today we're going to do the handover video on the Auto Trail Apache 632. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly coming over to the passenger side you'll notice that you've got your fill up point which is diesel which is straight into there. Opening up the passenger door whilst I'm here you'll notice on this vehicle you have got your Remis cab blinds. To operate these all you need to do is simply pinch and then pull. What I typically find is it's a lot easier if you lead with the bottom so you can then link it up to the side there and then when you are retracting them again lead from the bottom and let them clip in like so if these do get for uh, sorry if these do get jammed do not force them because they will rip and tear so do bear that in mind and as a rule of thumb with anything in a motorhome is it feel if it feels like it's being forced you are probably going to do something wrong so do bear that in mind so just take a minute to assess what you're doing as i say lead from the bottom and it'll just avoid that from getting caught. You've got uh, your Remis cab lines on all your cab windows, along with your front ones here, which again, will just pull to the center. Whilst I'm at the passenger side, you'll also notice your bonnet release catch, which is here. If I pull that, that'll release the bonnet. Underneath the bonnet, there's not many things that you need to know. However, I'll lift this open for you, just to point out a couple of things underneath. With the bonnet open as i say the main things that you need to know underneath here is how to jump start the vehicle if that is the case your positive is underneath this cap here which indicates there through a positive sign as you can see and then your negative will just connect onto there like so they're the main things that you need to know as i've said however just to point out a couple more things you'll notice that you've got your engine oil here along with your dipstick which is just below that you've then got your brake disc fluid your washer fluid your power steering fluid and then finally your radiator coolant which is just there coming around to the other side of the vehicle you'll notice that you've got your vehicle's awning which is on this side on your habitation door all you need to do with this is get your awning pole and you can see that you've got a simple t-shape there you then need to put the awning into that t-shape turn the awning slightly uh, turn the awning pole rather slightly and that will lock into the awning you can then wind out the awning and wind it out to around about where you can reach it you can then take the legs out let it take the weight and then get it uh, and then simply angle the legs to walk it out with your awning one thing to notice uh, to note rather is that um, you need to only use it uh, on clear days like today where there's not much wind obviously when you do get wind this is in essence a huge sail on the side of your vehicle so you do need to bear that in mind so for example if you have got any wind going underneath it it could run the risk of damaging the awning and also the vehicle uh, and subsequently tearing it off so do bear that in mind if it does rain as well you do need to always dry your awning out um, to as it will then lead to mold um, and again it'll just ruin the canvas do bear that in mind for when you are using the awning below there you then also got your gas bottle uh, 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 cupboard if i open this up on this vehicle you have got the gas low system which you can see is all plumbed in like so you'll also notice next to this you have also got your gas low cap so you don't need to undo this and then you can then simply put the pump in. One thing to know is when you are traveling, always have the bottles off um, as you don't want any gas in the vehicle because if you do end up in an accident, it could of course explode, so do bear that in mind. So always turn the gas, uh, the gas bottles off when you are traveling. And also when you are filling up, what you do need to do is then open them back up using the yellow valves on the side there. You have also on the top got a little indicator of when this is full which will then indicate you'll notice as well it's just up at the top here you have got a little arrow on this side depending on which bottle you want to use the gas out of so all you need to simply do is for example once you've run out of gas in this bottle simply turn that so the arrow faces this bottle and then you can then begin on taking gas out of that system there moving on from the gas system as i mentioned you've got your habitation door which is on this side which is all linked to the central locking 
along with a power assisted step which is just below that. Moving across you've then got your cassette toilet which is just here, I'll open that up for you now. With the cassette toilet open you notice that you can then gain access to the cassette. The main thing that when removing the cassette that you need to check is that the blade on the toilet is closed. I'll go into more depth on that on the inside but the main thing is if that blade is open what will happen is you'll come to remove this and this cassette will get jammed. What has happened in the past people will then pull that and then get it jammed and subsequently break the system. Do bear that in mind because that's not uh, we don't want that so always check that the blade on the toilet is closed as you can then lift up this handle and slide out like so. With the cassette out, I've just placed it on the ground here just to indicate the different aspects of the cassette. To empty this, all you need to do is pull out the funnel, unscrew the cap, and then you can simply tilt and empty it all. You'll notice that you've got an orange button on the back, press that button in, and that releases a vacuum. What that will mean that all the contents can flow out in one steady slurry without any splashback. Once you've done that, put some water in there, shake it from side to side that way, not the other way, so as you, or you'll break your arm uh, in the cassette, and then you've rinsed the system. You can then put this cap back on and pop that back into position there. Whilst I'm at the cassette as well, with this cap, if you wanted, you can put some blue fluid in the top of the cap and then put that straight into the cassette, or you can buy toilet sachets, which will simply go straight directly into the toilet and will act as your blue uh, liquid chemical. The final aspect of the cassette is you'll notice that you've got another orange handle here. This in essence makes contact with the blade. Once the blade is open, that turns and opens the cassette so all the waste can drop into the cassette. That should always remain in that position. You never need to touch this. Do bear that in mind. You don't need to turn that um, or, or pull it out or anything. Just leave it as it is. Because if you do turn that and you try and push it in, it's of course going to get jammed. So do bear that in mind. Moving on from the cassette, you'll then notice that you've got your external gas point, which is on there. All you'll need for this is a bayonet fitting into there, which can then connect to your gas point. And then you can turn the gas bottles on from the bottle and let the gas feed through. Moving to the back, if I unscrew these hinges and these locks, it gains you access to your garage area. In the garage we've got your carpets along with your awning pole which I mentioned which will just connect into that T up there along with a couple of pipes. You'll notice back here houses your pipes and also your water system um, in terms of for, for getting the water around the vehicle for your pump. It looks very complicated however the only thing that you need to know here is your drain down point for your boiler. The only thing for that is as you can see you've got a yellow toggle which is just there what that will do is that is the drain down point for your boiler system at the moment in the up position it is open all you need to do is simply flick that down and that will seal the uh, the boiler system for your gas uh, sorry for your gas for your uh, for your uh, boiler system once you've done that you can then prime your system for your boiler which i'll go into more detail on the inside and that will simply pull through when you're on site and you're ready to pack up and leave you'll then have a massive grid on the site which will drive over and then you'll flick that up as it is now and all that water will be dumped from the outside of the vehicle underneath here and what we say is a rule of thumb with all your drain down points is you can leave them open like this one is at the moment because as you're traveling home uh, after obviously being on the campsite all that water is going to get out of the vehicle thanks to the vibrations of the road so do bear that in mind the main thing is that you never get frozen water in your boiler system so always make sure that whenever you come to um, move on and, uh, and store the vehicle or you're not using the vehicle for a while always open that because you don't want frozen water being left in that system. Coming to the back you'll notice that you've got your bike rack which is on the back here along with your reversing camera which is just up at the top there. You've then got a tow bar which is just below here as you can see. Moving to the back, you've got another access point into the garage area, along with your trim vent, which in essence is your chimney. That does get very hot, so do bear that in mind. Don't hang anything on there or put your hands on there because it can get very hot, as I mentioned. 
Whilst we were on the topic of drain down points, as I mentioned, on the inside of the vehicle in the garage, you've got your drain down point for your fresh water, sorry, for your boiler drain down. And then underneath here, which is directly indicated by this sticker here, you'll notice that you've got two more drain downs here. This one you've got simply turns, just hold that into place. That'll allow you to turn it and open the valve. Same thing with this one, and that'll dump the water. And again, as I mentioned, for your boiler drain down point, you can leave these open, as this will uh, make sure when you're traveling, all your water is out of your system. One is for your wastewater, the other one's for your fresh. And as I mentioned, what I'd, what I'd recommend is where you're on site, I'd put a bucket over this area and I'd leave these open, especially when it's in the colder climate, because what that means is once they're open, all your water is coming straight out and straight into your bucket, meaning that it's not retaining in the vehicle. So it means when you are in the cooler climates, you're never ever gonna run the risk of getting frozen water in the system. Moving on, you'll then notice that you've got your fridge vents on the side of the vehicle there. Obviously this is where the fridge pulls its air from and uses it to then cool the fridge. Now, as you can imagine, if you have got the sun beating down on this side of the vehicle, it, has, it is going to struggle um, heating, uh, sorry, you know, cooling down that fridge. So do bear that, that in mind. Where you can necessarily do put this in shade just to help that fridge pull that cool air through. Moving across, you've then got your external shower point, which is just into here. Again, on a bay bayonet fitting, which will clip into there, you turn it and that'll lock in. That's uh, your shower is on the inside of the vehicle, which as I say, will clip into there. You can then activate it once your pump is on. Filling up your fresh water system is dead easy, just through this cap here. Put your key into there to remove that, unscrew the cap, and then your hose can go in. Your hose, let that obviously fill up, and once it's coming out, you know that it's full, and then you can simply tighten that back into position, and then you're good to go. Now, with your water, what I recommend is when you are traveling off-site, always drain your water down, because you don't really want to be traveling with water in your system, because one, it'll affect your payload, and two, it'll also affect the weight distribution of the vehicle, so do bear that in mind. On this side, you've also then got your gas bottle locker, uh, sorry, not your gas bottle locker, a bit more storage if I open that up now. With that open, that provides a nice, decent bit for storage. And then finally on this side, you've then got your hookup point for your mains electric, which is your 230 volt, which when you're on a site, you're going to be hooking it up to. Now that concludes the outside of the vehicle. We're now going to move onto the inside. With the door open, the step out and the lights on, we can now move onto the inside. Directly above your habitation door, you'll notice that you've got your control panel for the overall electrics of the vehicle and also your control panel for your heating. Firstly, to begin with, we're going to talk you through your auto trail panel, which is just here. So coming back to the panel, all you need to do to activate is simply click the button here and you'll notice that activates your lights and the vehicle. You can then click this button here you have got a door light which is on the ex uh, external side of the vehicle which you can then click and that will activate your door light as well you've also you'll also notice that you've got a tap button here this is a button for your tap uh, for your pump rather so when you've got water in the vehicle you can click this button on and that's going to pull your water through and prime your system to explain that as I say put your water in the vehicle press your button come to your tap including your shower and your bathroom tap push it to hot and then turn it on what that's going to do it's going to pu uh, pull water from the fresh water tank it's then going to take it into your boiler priming your boiler and then out of your tap it's going to splurt and splutter and then once it's running steadily you've primed your system once you've done that for your hot water flick it over to cold and do the exact same again once it's spurter, uh, once it's finished spurting and spluttering You've prime your system. As I say, you need to do this for all your taps, including your shower. Uh, make sure you do this. You'll get into the habit of doing that every time you are on site. And that will just ensure that everything is turned on and primed. Only do that, obviously, uh, and activate your pump when you have got water in the system. One thing as well to mention about the pump is once you have primed your system, you can leave the pump on because on each of your taps, you've got a micro switch, which will activate and deactivate the pump 
when you need it. So you'll never ever burn it out with that still on. Providing, as I say, you've got water in the system. Final button on this side of the vehicle allows you to switch the vehicle battery and leisure battery. So for example, if you wanted the lights and everything on the inside of the vehicle to run off the vehicle battery, you can do and vice versa. What I personally recommend is to never select this button. Always leave it on leisure battery as it indicates here on this screen. It's quite difficult to see due to the light. But the reason being is if you do, if you are without power, uh, the worst case scenario is that you'll be left without any lights. However, if you do run it off your vehicle battery, you of course then it's going to then take it off your vehicle battery and then you may not be able to travel. So do bear that in mind. Uh, always flip that the other way. You have got a built-in alternator with this vehicle as well. Uh, so that means when you are traveling, your engine battery will charge your leisure battery. Coming over to this side, you've then got the option to select through your menu menus. I know it's quite difficult to see at the moment, but on there it does say your leisure battery. At the moment is reading poor because we're not um, plugged in. Once you're plugged in, that's up to uh, voltage. You'll be on your way. Uh, then, it, then, if I focus that, then indicates your leisure battery, uh, sorry, sorry, your vehicle battery, your fresh water, which again gives a percentage of nothing at the moment. Again, your waste water, your battery current, solar current, the external temperature, and then the option of your tank heaters. You can, of course, change the clock and also set alarms if you'd wish. And then we're back to the beginning. Now coming away from your main auto trail control panel onto your Truma heating panel, you'll notice that you've got this button in the middle. If I pull, if I turn, uh, if, sorry, if I hold that, that'll turn on the system. If I then click, everything below the line is what you want to select. So firstly, to begin with, if I click this button, this is for your vehicle's temperature. You can take this just by rotating. You can select through the options just by rotating this wheel. To select, simply press the wheel in. You can take this all the way to 30 degrees if you wish to. So when you're on site, you'll take it all the way to 30. You'll then got your water temperature. You've got the option of eco, hot, or boost. Eco is approximately 40 degrees. Hot is 70 degrees. And boost concentrates on heating the water. So you're going to be using eco when you're having a shower. You're going to be using hot when you're washing up. And then boost is when you really want to concentrate if it's struggling to get uh, the, the, the water warm and you want to um, try and uh, fast track that, you can select it on boost. And as I say, it means that the Truma system will concentrate on heating the actual water of the vehicle rather than heating the vehicle itself. So it'll take that emphasis off. Going again back through the options, you've then got your fuel option. You've got the option of gas, mix one, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric, mix two, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric. EL1, which is one kilowatt electric, and EL2, which is two kilowatt electric. Your fuel is really important because this is where uh, this is where you select what you want your Truma panel running off. So, for example, if I'm uh, on site and I want and I'm uh, wild camping, you need to run it off your gas. But if you're on uh, if you're on site and you're hooked up, you can run it off your EL, which is your electric. What may happen is you've got uh, gas selected, so it's going to try and you know, power the system using gas, but you might not have your gas turned on. So you'll then get a flashing error code, which will come up. When you have got that, you then need to um, simply reset the system. To reset the system, you need to go into your settings, which I'll just flick through there. If I click that in, if I flick all the way to the bottom, you've got reset. Once you click that, that will reset the entire panel. It'll say initializing. You then need to wait 20 minutes and that will reset it to get rid of that error code. Just bear that in mind for when you're selecting a fuel. Finally, the last option underneath the line is your fan. At the moment, because I've not got anything selected, it's just going to give me the option of vent. So that'll just circulate the air which is currently in the vehicle. Once you have got something selected, you'll have the option of eco, high or boost. Um, again, depending on what intensity you want the fan blowing the hot air out at. Finally, a couple more options. If I click this, you can set a timer for when you want the uh, the Truma panel to come on and heat your vehicle. And then finally, you can change, obviously, the time. To turn this off, simply hold in that button and eventually it'll say off. 
like so. And that'll turn off the system. Always make sure you turn it off before unplugging the vehicle because uh, you do run the risk again of getting an error code for the next time you uh, come to use it on. Moving into the lounge area, you'll notice that you've got your storage up at the top here, and longers in here, here, and also underneath this bench here. You have also opposite this bench, got another bench here, which can lift up and with storage underneath. One thing to mention is this lounge area will convert into a bed if you wanted to, so you can simply pull this out like so. You'll notice how that back will then recline and drop into place once this is here and you can form this area into a small double bed. For your controls they're now located in this locker here. As you can see this gives you your fuses and it also locates your RCD breaker. If your vehicle ever tra uh, trips rather you need to come to this system here. You don't need to press any of these buttons here, leave these all on, these are simply just uh, isolator buttons. The main thing that you need to know is of course your fuses and your trip box. If your vehicle ever trips, come to here and you can flick these back up. And you'll also notice that you've got a yellow button here which has a T on it. That indicates test, so for example if you're on site and you can't get any power to the vehicle, however you have got your hookup lead um, you know, in the vehicle, click this button. And what that means, and if these all trip and flick down, you know that you're getting power to the vehicle. So you therefore know that there isn't a problem or a fault with the uh, the vehicle's lead that you're using, uh, you know, hookup lead or the, the actual site. The problem is with your vehicle, which it will then bring us on to here so you can have a look at your fuses to see what is wrong. So it's a nice little tip just to sort of diagnose what the issue is and save a bit of time. Coming into the kitchen area, you'll notice that you've got your microwave which is up at the top. One thing to notice with the microwave is that the microwave is 230 volts and will only work when you are, of course, um, hooked up to mains electric. Below that you've got your hob, which with your hob you've got electric ring and three gas and also your oven and grill which are just below. In here you've got some storage, you'll also notice that located in here is your cutlery drawer and also your external shower head which will connect to that point as I've shown you outside. You've also got a bit more storage overhead there and also some storage hanging just here, like so. Underneath, underneath this point, you'll notice that you've got your fridge. This is a Dometic fridge and how this works is there's three ways to fuel it. You'll notice that you've got three buttons here. You've got a plug. You've then got a gas like flame icon and then a battery icon. So your plug indicates 230 volts. So when you're on site, you can click that and that'll run the fridge off your mains electric. Your gas is for wild camping. So that flame icon, click that and that'll run it off your gas. And then you've finally got your leisure battery symbol, which is there, click that, and that'll run the system off the leisure battery. Now, when you're gonna be using each one. So the first one you're gonna be using when you're on site, of course, with it being mains electric. The second one you're gonna be using when you're off grid and you're wild camping, so you're not on a site and you wanna run the fridge off gas. And then finally, your leisure battery, you're gonna be running the fridge off that when you are traveling, um, for example, uh, when you've got the engine running. A lot of people think that they can run the fridge off the leisure bathroom in the wild camping, however you can't, because if that was the case, you'd simply drain all of the leisure battery's juice and energy because the fridge draws so much. And that's exactly the reason why it'll only let you power it off gas um, if the engine's not running. It'll only allow you to click this button when the engine's running, because as I mentioned earlier, you've got a built-in alternator which will complete, constantly charge that leisure battery as the vehicle battery is running, which will con constantly charge and send a feed to your fridge. Located next to this as well, you have got your table, which is just in that slot here, with a little clip just to stop it from sliding out. One thing to mention, just on your fridge as well, is your fridge does a very good job at maintaining temperature. As you can see, you can alter the temperature just by clicking this button here. Uh, but it doesn't do the best of temperature uh, jobs at getting it down to temperature. So if you want cold things to be in the fridge, 
put cool things in. Same thing with the freezer. If you want frozen things to be in the freezer, put frozen things in. Coming into your bathroom area, as I've discussed with the bathroom and your sh uh, with your shower and your tap, and of how to prime it. Of course, this is just a reminder that you need to do that for these systems as well. But the main important thing is your toilet cassette. Now for your toilet, how this works is that, as I mentioned outside, when in use, you need to open the blade. Push the blade across and that'll open the cassette. That then will allow you to use it so all the waste can drop into the cassette. Once you've done that, you then need to come up to your button here, click that blue button, and that is your flush. That'll activate your flush and flush the system, getting rid of all the waste. That'll then flush it into the cassette, and once you've done that, pull that blade back to close the cassette, and that does one or two things, two things rather. The first thing is it'll stop the odours from escaping, and also it'll also make sure that once that is closed, when you come to remove it, you'll never have that problem of it snagging. So do bear that in mind, make sure that is always closed after use. Finally, as I mentioned, you've got your flush up here, which worth is worth mentioning, will only work once you've got your pump on. And then finally, as well, you've got some little lights which go up here, which will indicate when the cassette is full. You'll notice that we've got a red light on at the moment because we've got water in the cassette just to clean it out. But once uh, that is all emptied, this will go off. And as I say, once it's nearly full, you'll get a red light just to indicate that. Once you get that, you do need to empty it. In the way, you've then got your bedroom. You've got cupboards up at the top there. And also, as you can see, a TV point at the back. You've also then got a curtain here just to divide the space. Just before coming back uh, and finishing up the video, we're coming back into your lounge just to indicate that you have got a flip-down DVD player, which is just on there. And also, in this storage cupboard, you have got a point for your aerial. How your aerial works is firstly, you need to switch the aerial on. There's a little button up at the top here, which you need to flick on. You'll then get a light on like so. Once you've got that, you can then unscrew this cap, push the aerial up and then tighten it into position. You'll then notice you've got a little arm on the bottom of this, which you can then turn and twist just to tilt the head of the aerial to maximize that signal. You'll get a green light on here once you've got good signal. It is worth mentioning as well that you need to always make sure that that is down because obviously when you are traveling you don't want that up because you could hit trees. Along with your checks for your aerial on all of your windows you need to make sure that these are all closed when traveling. To open these these are just on latches which once unscrewed like so you will free up the window so you can push out. You've then got a black knob on either side which can then tighten and leave it into place and lock it in like so. You can also put this on venting if you'd like. You've also got on all your uh, uh, windows a blackout blind and a fly screen, which is just above there. Now that concludes the handover video on the Apache 632. I hope you enjoyed.